Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I started this series where I answer your questions concerning pregnancy and the newborn stage. And in today's video, I'm going to be answering questions concerning delivery, okay? Preparing for delivery, the delivery experience and you know, all of that, okay? That's basically the category I'm going to be answering today. I'm going to leave a link to my breastfeeding video in the description box. I'm also going to do videos about other things like newborn care, hair care, skin care, and all other things concerning pregnancy and delivery and newborn stage, okay? Anyway, without so much intro, which I've already done, let's just get into it. So the first one is, are there tips to make vaginal delivery easier? Yes, there are some things that you can do to make it easier for you. I found out about some of them after the fact and it annoyed me that I didn't know about these things earlier. So if you are pregnant and you're watching this, this is the best time for you to watch this, okay? Anyway, one of the first things that you should do to help make your vaginal delivery easier is to exercise, okay? Yes. That word that we don't like to hear, that word that is very annoying to some of us, okay? Exercise is very important, you know, for vaginal delivery. Now, before pregnancy, if you're already exercising, that's great. Then continue throughout your pregnancy, right? But if you are not exercising before you got pregnant, then please do not jump into it and start doing dumbbells and, you know, uh, uh, running on the treadmill and all of that, okay? Light exercise is helpful, walking, you know, just taking a few steps, doing more than you normally do, okay? Going up and down the stairs, gently, oh, like a normal human being. I didn't say go and jog up and down the stairs, even though I did it, right? I'm not saying go and jog up and down the stairs, but, you know, try and just get some sweat on, try and do some physical activities, especially the ones that in, involve walking, pelvic exercises, get an exercise ball, you know, there's some yoga poses and yoga you know, exercises that you can do. If you Google online, you'll see so many of them. There's some exercises that you can do that can actually help you with vaginal delivery, okay? Again, like I said, I didn't find out about some of these things in my first two, um, but with my third one, I tried some and I feel like it works for me. You know, I got that exercise ball as well. So if you just get a big exercise ball, do some poses on it, some yoga poses, some breathing exercises, you know, with the ball and all of that, it can help you, okay? Again, taking long walks, like, as long as your body can tolerate it. I'm not saying that maybe you don't need to walk before then now you want to do 20 miles. No, I'm just saying do more than your normal resting activity kind of activity, okay? <laughs> I hope that makes sense. But yeah, exercise actually helps with vaginal delivery, okay? The next one is Kegel exercises, okay? Kegel exercises is where you exercise your vaginal muscles or the vaginal wall or the muscles in your vaginal cavity or something i don't even know how to describe this okay but go and google it okay so it's basically kegel exercises help you with breathing as well then it helps to strengthen your pelvic muscles i didn't i tried this but i couldn't keep up okay i kept forgetting but if you can keep up with it i have heard from women who kept up with it that they didn't experience any tearing they didn't experience any you know that their delivery went on fast and their recovery you know was quite quick as well because they already were doing Kegel exercises. So again, anecdotal for me, but if you can, please try and do it. Google about it and learn it. And then I think they even have an app on your phone now that you can just put and to guide you through it. If you can do it, then all the best, okay? Now the next one is, and again, I have to put a disclaimer. I did not personally try this, but I learned about it. I think I learned about this one too, when I was pregnant, to be honest, but I just didn't try it. It is inserting evening primrose oil into your vagina, okay? Some people, again, I'm just telling you what they said. Personally, I did not do it, though. I'm not even advising you to do it. But if you go and research about it and it makes sense to you, that is it, right? Evening primrose oil, first of all, is very good for you. I take it now, actually now, I take it a lot and I love it. Like, it has changed a lot for me physically and even um period wise I, I i love it anyway but while pregnant i think it's not advisable while pregnant for you to take it but when you are getting close to your delivery time some women say that they insert evening primrose oil 1000 milligram the capsule they insert it as far up into their cervix as they as they can and they leave it there for it to you know dissolve and all of that so that doing it helps to lubricate the area and strengthen it and you know basically prevent you from tearing and all of that that is what they said i cannot uh i 
attest to this because I did not try it, okay? So go and do your research. If it makes sense for you and you have the mind to try it, then I don't know. I don't know. I'm not advising you to. <laughs> Another thing, I think I've said it before, but you need to learn how to breathe through the pain, okay? I'm advising you, but I don't think I did it. Uh, maybe I tried to. I think I tried to a bit, but... <laughs> what they advised us is, you know, you breathe through the pain. Me, I was breathing like this. <laughs> I was breathing with the pain. I was not breathing through it, though. I was using the pain to breathe. In this kind of breathing that you are making the motion of breathing, but I don't think I was really breathing, you know. But anyway, they teach you people, they teach pregnant women breathing exercises, if you're not even pregnant. In fact, the best time to prepare for vaginal delivery is before you get pregnant, okay? But you're already pregnant. So what's waiting man go do? Uh, now is the best time to start. As you're already pregnant, and now that you're watching this video, is the best time to start, okay? Start learning how to breathe through the pain, learn how to relax your muscles, learn how to, you know, hold it in, not to scream and expend all your energy. Because sometimes you feel like screaming is helping you, you know, release the pain or whatever. But screaming sometimes makes things worse for you because you're using the last energy you're supposed to use and push the pain out. You are using it to scream, okay? So try and see if you can learn again i i, I i'm not uh, advising you as a pro in this area because me i'm not sure i really did it i tried to i tried to in fact now looking back when i hear some people's stories i'm like i actually know how to endure pain child i wasn't the type that would be screaming and shouting and everybody would be coming except when the time really came close but when i was going through contractions i would try to breathe when things start like this i'll start breathing as much as I can, okay? I breathe as much as you can. Try to move your mind for me. It's very difficult what I'm saying we should do, but just try, okay? As when you're feeling the contraction, try and be breathing. Breathe, taking deep breaths through your nose and deep breaths out of your mouth, okay? It is not, when I say deep breaths, you have to be conscious about what you're doing with your nose and your mouth. It's not just subconsciously, doing, you might not be breathing, you think you're breathing, okay? You have to put, then your head, you have to put your head, remove your head from the pain and focus it on what your nose and your mouth is doing. So you have to breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth, okay? When you're breathing like that, sometimes you might get dehydrated, so they will give you ice block to suck on, or they can, you can sip water if they allow it, I don't know. But for me, they gave me ice block to suck on during, I think that was Eva's delivery, because of how I was breathing, right? Because when you're breathing through your nose and your mouth, you tend to get dehydrated easily, okay? So just try and remove your mind from the pain and put it into the nose and the mouth. If you've had contractions before, you understand what I mean, right? contractions except when you're getting really close contractions start and then stop and in between contractions it almost seems like nothing was happening before in fact with eva's delivery i was sleeping in between contractions because i was very tired anyway so i was sleeping in between contractions contractions like i'll be sleeping off i can even hear myself snoring next thing i will feel the pain again and i wake up oh my god what is all this what is this this charge you leave me alone then the contractions will now be going i'm not start breathing <sighs> when it now stops and i'll be like ah. next thing i'll fall asleep um, start sleeping again next thing i'll wake up oh jesus help me help me <laughs> You'll be making all kinds of sounds. You will sound like a cow, like a goat, like a, 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 all kinds of sounds to come from your mouth that time, okay? But again, that is the time that, especially if you have like a partner that is there to remind you, remind you to breathe, remind you to, you know, focus on your breathing, remind you to, you know, stay in certain positions. Another thing is when you're laboring, I think I've said entering labor talk now. When you're laboring there, eh, the worst place to labor is on your back. I don't know they don't teach us that thing. The worst place to labor is on your back. Except if maybe your water has broken and you're not allowed to move around or your cervix is open, too open, and you're not allowed to move around or something. If you are just in the starting stages and all is well and you're giving the go ahead, please, it's better for you to be on squatting position, better for you to be on all fours, it's better for you to be on, you know, lean on, your, on a chair like this, okay, or be on all fours. You are better laboring on your front than on the back. Because when you're laboring on the back, you're forcing the pain of that uh, um, contractions to 
in instead of out. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, contraction is, is trying to push baby out, okay? So if you stay in a position that is easier for the baby, that feels like you're pushing the baby out, the pain is not as bad as when you're on your back, like you're trying to keep the baby in. So the pain is usually worse when you're on your back. Trust me, you'll see the difference if, if you can try it. So try and labor on your front, on all fours, in squatting position, just in ways that will help alle alleviate the pain, okay? Another thing to do during um, pregnancy is squats. It helps with vaginal delivery if your knees can carry it, okay? If you already have strong knees or if you were exercising before you got pregnant, then you can do squats. If not, my dear sister, no try -am. No try -am because if you reach down, you might need help to bring you back up. And if you don't have help at that time, then you will remain where you are. <laughs> You might just land on the floor. Now, after you've given birth, if you had any tear or any, um, what they call it now, episiotomy or whatever, and you know, you're stitched up and you're going through pain, I have heard, even though I did not try it again, I have heard of putting witch hazel on, witch hazel is a liquid that they use for, you know, cleaning face and all of that, or cleaning wounds, is a kind of, um, it's not antiseptic, I'll call that term. What do they call it? What is witch hazel anyway? Witch hazel, it comes in liquid form. It's in, it comes in bottles anyway. If you can take witch hazel and pour it on your pad and put it in the freezer before you wear it, okay? So the coolness plus the witch hazel helps to heal the place and also to soothe the place, okay? It helps to soothe the pain. That's what I, I read about. I did not try it. Um, having a squirt bottle. Me, I didn't usually, I didn't really use a squirt bottle because um, my bathroom we have bonbon -bon flusher. Okay, that's bidet or whatever they call it. Is it bidet they call it? Whatever they call it. Anyway, that bonbon -bon flusher. That's what they call it. We have it in our house, so I always used it. Then do not wipe. Okay, when you pee, sometimes it stings when you pee. Don't wipe. Okay, just. Use the bumble washer and rinse off the area to keep it clean. And then if you have a towel, a very nice towel, you can just dab the excess. Or if you have paper towel that is, is soft, just dab the excess water out and then leave the place and wear your pad, okay? And just leave the place alone. Um, people also talk about um, seats, but I don't really know much about it. I don't really know why I don't like that thing. It doesn't sound hygienic to me. <laughs> because basically you're sitting inside with warm water or hot water. You know, warm water. They say seats, but is to sit in warm, not hot, to warm water with Epsom salt. They even have seats baths bowl, you know, so you just sit in it for a while and the water just helps to rinse up the area and to, you know, keep it clean. People that have hemorrhoids to use it, helps to keep the place clean and also help to soothe the area, okay? That's what they say, but to me, it doesn't sound hygienic. It just sounds more kind, even though doctors prescribe it. And even the types of pads that you use, try and get pads that are soft and are, you know, you know those Dr. Brown's pads and stuff like that? I now understand why they use them. Those pads are actually soft, even though for me, they are too bulky, right? I don't like the bulkiness of the pads, but they're actually soft on the area, right? So what I used to do then was I used to put my normal pad, my normal pad with wings. I put the pad first and I now put the Dr. Browns or the, what do you call it? Lady sets, so those, those kind of thick, like cotton wool basically. It's just cotton wool and gauze in here. So I just put it after, you know, it gets soaked, I remove it. Sometimes if it gets soaked without my pad underneath it's getting soaked. So I just change and put another one back. But I still have my pad there just in case there's leakage and stuff like that. So it makes you, it makes it comfortable for me after I give breath. Then also look into wearing diapers. During my time, I bought, during Sophia, when I gave it to Sophia, I bought a diaper, but I bought the wrong type. The type I bought was a normal type that you, you know, do like normal diapers i now looked into it and found out that it was very uncomfortable when i tried it like it wasn't working for me even though i used it for a while it wasn't really working for me i now discovered that i should have bought the ones that are like pants okay those ones that they call the pants they are like you know how pull-ups are yes pull-ups for adults those are the more the better ones to use so if you can get your hands on those and that would be the best thing for you after you give birth they also have like a postpartum pants that they give in hospitals in america or they give i don't know or people in america have it i used to see it on all these baby center and co i never see them for niger but now that we have so many things being imported we might have it in nigeria as well so if you can get your hands on it then that would be fantastic for you now the next one is are there tips for overcoming the fear of labor um for me one thing i always just 
try to remind people is that yeah, do you know how many people are mothers today? Many people have gone through it, they've come out. Even people that you consider weak women, they've done it, they've come out, they're still alive, they're doing well. Some people went seven times, eight times. Even the people that give you horror stories about uh, delivery, many of them have multiple children. If it was that bad, why did you go again and again and again? Okay, so again, it is something that you are equipped to. Your body was literally designed to do it. Okay, so don't see it as something out of your control or out of your, you know, area of expertise, basically. Your body was designed to do these things. So just trust the process and trust your body to do these things and pray about it, okay? Put all your fears on God. Tell God about it. Tell God what you want. Pray about it. Read about it. Educate yourself about it as much as you can. Prepare for it. And when it comes, take it like a champ, okay? Take it like a champ. After you scream and shout and everything, when they give you a baby and they saw you back up, you'll now be normal. <laughs> You don't be like the rest of us, even though you had like some hours or some minutes of madness before. Nobody knows again, nobody cares, even if you have it on video. Uh -huh, so, okay, nobody knows, nobody cares. Okay, so allow yourself to go through it. You are designed to do this. Okay, your body can do this. Just encourage yourself. Don't listen to negative stories. Do what the doctor says you should do. Look for the best doctor, first of all. Okay, because when you have a doctor that you trust, you actually be more relaxed. But when you're in a place that you're not really sure what's happening here, you'll be tensed. Okay, so look for good doctors around you who are experienced, they know what they are doing, and they have a good support system like the nurses and all of that. You know, the nurses can actually impact on your labor. Like, if you have good nurses, good midwives, good um, doulas, you know, labor nurses, and all of that, if you have good ones around you, it will make your experience more palatable it's not like it would be it would be pain-free but more palatable some people actually experience pain-free delivery so it just depends on your system your body your nature your genetics and all of that so many things factor into how bad or how good you have labor experience right but just know that whatever it is whether you have it bad or you have it good you will come out victorious say it to yourself confess it, confess it to yourself say what you want to see say what you want to hear say what you want to experience okay and even if in the time of delivery as you're delivering that child even if things are not going the way you were saying before don't, don't say excuse me, don't say, hey, after everything I've said, after all my prayer, no, that is even the time that you should emphasize what you've been saying. Tell God, <laughs> I'm not going to die, okay? I'm going to live to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm going to take care of this child. I'm going to dedicate this child. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to come out of this victorious. I'm going to carry my baby and my baby's subsequent ones. Okay, I'm going to be alive to take care of my children. Say this thing to yourself. In that moment when the things are getting bad, that's when you should now even start confessing more. That should not be the moment you now allow fear because what the devil wants is for you to allow fear to consume you so that he can consume you. Okay, he will use your fear to defeat you. So in that time, because it happened to me, if you watch my video about, you know, how I gave it to Sophia, things started <laughs> going sideways, okay? In fact, it happened with my three kids. That's why I should have known, but somehow, you know, when you don't really have, like, a good doctor, I don't know how to explain it. Like, when you don't really have um, a good follow-up doctor, you might not understand these things, okay? So the doctor that delivered me for, um, for Cora was different from the doctor that delivered me for... Uh, Eva and was different from the doctor I, I saw for Sophia. Okay, so if I had had the same doctor throughout, I would have known that there was a pattern of you know placenta issues with my three two, my three kids. Right, I had it with Cora, I had it with Eva, and then the worst was now with Sophia. Okay, with Eva it was worse than the one with Cora. Right, so but I did not have the same doctor, and none of the the first two doctors pointed it out to me as an issue. Right, even though on the bed there, delivery bed, this is a long story, Shah. but even though on the delivery bed there, they had to tackle some placenta issues, they did not point it out to me to mention it to my doctor or to really take note of it that I had placenta issues, right? So by placenta issues, I mean that my placenta was not coming out when it was supposed to come out, okay? With Cora, it took a while before it came out, they had to give me injections and try to guide it out. With Ava, they had to give me injections, guide it out, and still took hand inside to bring out the leftovers because it didn't come out completely. With Sophia, it no one come out. He, no one, he did not want to come out. He stayed there. <laughs> and you guys know how dangerous it was, right? So at that time when it wasn't coming out to Sophia's time, I was like, I was confessing positive. I was envisioning 
Because me, I have, I like um, imagination, okay? To me, it is a power or a gift that I have, the gift of imagination, okay? So, at that time, I was envisioning what I would wear to dedicate Sophia, how I would dress, what I'm going to do for her on her first birthday, you know, how I'm going to celebrate her, how I'll be just people the story of, hey, see what happened. I, I literally envisioned myself telling the story on YouTube about, hey, see what happened to me when I gave birth to Sophia. At the time that it was happening, you know, I, when I was doing all these things, the, the person that never come out, though, the person that was still where I told, but I was there talking about, thinking about dedication, you know, how she'll be on her first birthday, how I'll just everybody about what happened. Power of imagination, because again, for whatever you dwell on will happen, okay? That's what, that's what they say, basically. Whatever you dwell on will happen. So for me to dedicate my child, I have to be there now. I won't I be there to dedicate my child? So nothing will happen to me because I have to dedicate the child. And nothing will happen to the child either. So I always think of dedication, how I'll dance to the altar. So all these things, all this imagination helps me to even relax and just say, God has got this. Everything is under control. It will not, like, I'm going to tell this story. So I have to be alive to tell this story now. It's my mouth so I always tell the story. And I have to be alive well, articulate healthy to tell the story okay yeah so um uh, again the power of imagination the power of um, positive confession the power of your thoughts okay so dwell on good things dwell on positive things and even in that situation because a lot of people it changes for them then they're not crying and lamenting meanwhile you're not out of the you're not out of the danger zone yet you're already lamenting won't you wait when you come out of the danger zone you cannot say god why you're on the danger zone there that's why you're, 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 you're questioning god are you okay <laughs> You want him to call you to come and give you, let him give you the answer directly in heaven. So at that point, when the time to start panicking, I start saying, hey, after my prayer, no. That is the time that you should start confessing positive and you should start, all those things that you said. Now, in fact, times 100, you know, you know, emphasize them times 100. Someone is asking, is there a way to prevent miscarriage or to stop it? No, there is no way to prevent most miscarriages are not preventable okay it's nothing that you did to cause it you can't cause it and you can't stop it okay so nothing you did nothing you you know did not do that made you have that miscarriage okay so in most i can't remember the percentage but i think it's like whether 75 percent or something like that of miscarriages are not preventable and you did not do anything to cause it okay but there are some that you can prevent like if you have an open cervix, they can do uh, what they call this thing now, where they stitch your cervix. What's the word? It's not cartilage. If I remember the word I put it on the screen, they do something for you that later they don't remove the thing. Like they sew your cervix together so that your baby does not basically fall out. I've forgotten the name. Anyway, um, yeah, if they can do that one for you, it can help to prevent, especially I think late term miscarriages they can do what's the word is i can't remember it sacrilege yes sacrilege yeah sacrilege yeah so they can do that to prevent it they can also give you um if you have a history of of miscarriages most times that's the bad thing about things like this most times you would have experienced this first for them to now know what to do the next time to prevent it right so if you have a history of miscarriages or your baby is fine but there's a threatened miscarriage they can give you progesterone okay either they give you the shot or they give you the inserts to insert it can help prevent you from losing your child okay but just know that in a lot of cases there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing you did to cause it so there's nothing you can do to stop it okay so don't blame yourself don't let your partner blame you don't let anybody blame you because it's nothing you did about it. it's not, not be you not, not be you because i'm okay if you see an experienced doctor early they can actually help to prevent some preventable types okay but it has to be preventable first for them to be able to prevent it okay. when is the right week to register for antenatal for me i think that antenatal you should register at is it eight weeks you register at eight weeks and then you start attending at 12 weeks that's how they do it in my hospital i can't remember i think that's how it is at eight weeks or at six weeks after they do that six week scan to confirm pregnancy i'll be your eight week scan to confirm pregnancy then you will register then you come at your 12 weeks when you register at eight weeks they'll just give you your meds to be taken for one month then when you now come at 12 weeks you can now see doctor and you know check has beat and all of that but before then they just give you meds to go and be taken okay but it's good to register then you get some talks you get your medication you also get um advice and whatever and then if you have any pre-existing conditions or whatever um they can find it out then i remember that during 
I think during your six weeks appointment or your eight weeks, there's one that when you come, you have to do blood tests where they check for all kinds of, you know, things. They check your blood for all kinds of things. Um, then they also do one resource factor, something, something. Anyway, it's better for you. The earlier you go and at least register, see a doctor, do your checkups, your, your pre preliminary checks or your, you know, the initial checks, the earlier you go for it, the better for you. Then at 12 weeks, you can now start strolling in to do the physical one-on-one, -on -one, um, one-on-one or group antenatal that some people do. Some people do group one. Now when I come and be singing, they'll be giving you guys talks, telling you people about different things, how to, antenatal is actually very important if you can find a good place where they, you know, take it seriously. It's actually fun. Like you, you will make friends, you know, you make delivery bodies, maybe people that you have the same um, due date with. You, you will have delivery bodies. You actually make friends. You will see people that are more advanced than you. Then you also see beginners and you'll be like, especially if you're more advanced, you now see a beginner, right? Like, How many weeks? Then I say, ah, I'm just 12 weeks. You'll be like, ah, you're just starting. You know, all those things are fun anyway. So, um, I always advise people that if you can, then it's very good to register for antenatal in a very good hospital. In fact, you can even go to all these, uh, what they call it, all these local, not local, what they call them now, all these healthcare centers. You can go there for antenatal, even though you are giving birth in a private clinic or whatever. You can still go to all these health centers for antenatal. It's actually a very fun experience. They will teach you songs, you know, you see people dancing, singing. If you complain, they will yap you joy, look at you. Yeah, Biggie Belay, what are you complaining about? When you are doing, was it not sweet? You know, that kind of thing, you know. It's fun, actually. So, if you can, then please go for it. Now, this next question is, I'm hoping to try VBAC, which is vaginal delivery, after CS, okay? Vaginal birth after CS. What's your take on that? Personally, yo, I haven't done CS before anyway, but personally, if you already don't see us, my dear, just finish up now. Eh? Just finish up. <laughs> I personally don't like that kind of play, okay? I've heard too many horror stories. Again, I always say don't listen to horror stories, but I've heard too many horror stories. I've seen people being advised otherwise, okay? If you start with CS, just better for you to just end with CS. Except the duration between your last CS and your vaginal delivery is very long. Like maybe after seven years, and uh hey, -huh, you want to just try it after seven years, that kind of thing. Or maybe six years or five years, you know. Try and just allow enough time before you go and try vaginal delivery after you've had CS, okay? That's why some people are usually against CS because many times they don't want to try, they don't want to continue doing CS, so they don't want to try CS with the first child and all of that. But for me, it should be your, your aim is to give birth, Abi. Your aim is to carry your child, Abi. Is that not your aim? Do you have another aim aside that? As long as your aim is to carry your child, then go with, go with what your doctor advises you. If your doctor tells you that you, you can attempt it and you really strongly believe that you want to attempt it, then maybe you should. But if your doctor tells you not to attempt it, don't go and be walking up and down looking for the one that will tell you, no, it's okay. If one or two doctors have told you that it's not okay, please just go and let them cut your belly and bring your child out. It's the child you want, right? You, nobody's, like, it's not bragging rights. Like, there's no bragging right there, what I'm trying to say. Just do what you have to do to be safe. Your you, you are safe, your baby is safe. That's all. What's the best lifestyle to practice when pregnant to have a beautiful, healthy, and chubby baby? Now, the funny thing about this, okay, let me just say the chubby part, you don't really have control over the chubby part, okay? It is mostly genetics that makes your child either chubby or not. Genetics and, you know, the time the child comes out, okay? So, if you have a child earlier, maybe 35 weeks, 36 weeks, 34 weeks, your child is most likely going to be lepa, okay? Because they've not had enough time to eat, right but if you have a child 39 weeks 40 weeks 41 weeks you are most likely going to have a chubbier child because they spend more time in the womb okay so the chubby part you can't really control it that much because again um it depends on genetics and all of that but when it comes to having a beautiful beautiful again that one are genetics my dear sister uh, now, now your genes <laughs> now you that became resemble <laughs> Is it that you or your husband or your husband's people or your own people, okay? That child resembles somebody. So don't come and be thinking that there's something you could have done to change it. No, it's genetics. Um, for me, it's, and most babies actually grow into their faces. 
whether his baby was ugly at birth or not that one is not anybody's business your baby will grow into his his or her face um but when it comes to now healthy yes that one i can actually answer having a healthy baby try and eat well try and eat healthy try and take your supplements let food be your drugs okay yes you you have your postpartum your prenatal um, vitamins and your prenatal drugs and all of that you have all of that but let's let food be your drugs okay any food you can tolerate that is healthy anyone like let's say now you like eating junk food but you can you can tolerate vegetable soup right eat vegetable soup till it comes out from your nose <laughs> you can tolerate okra soup or maybe you have nausea but you can tolerate maybe beans or something healthy right you can add vegetables to that your beans and eat that beans till the thing grows on your head right so to me it's just a situation of trying to make the best out of this out of your situation it doesn't mean that you, because some people say ah you're not eating healthy you should eat fruit you should eat this you should eat that what if she cannot keep anything down like you want her to kill herself we should we should die because she's pregnant so the one that you can tolerate eat it to the max okay your body will still should be what your body needs is nutrients right it doesn't care whether it's getting the nutrients from apple if it needs vitamin c it does not care whether the vitamin c is coming from vegetables or from orange or from lemon or from you know licky licky or whatever <laughs> or from lettuce your body does not care what it needs vitamin c right so if it is lettuce that you can tolerate eat lettuce till it comes out from your eyes <laughs> you know that's that's basically the advice i give okay but still go well, go what your doctor says so i mean i'm not a doctor or anything go what your doctor says but as a mother who has been pregnant three times this is what i did that helped me okay the one i can eat i eat it very well the one i can't eat i skip and pass okay it's not better for me to have food in my tummy than for me to be trying to eat healthy and then vomit everything what's the point right another thing to have a healthy baby is to try and start even before you get pregnant okay yes as women if you are in the childbearing age then you should start and you want to have kids basically even if you don't want to have kids because you can basically get pregnant but if you are in the childbearing age you should try and live a healthy life and take supplements folic acid is very important for your child's development okay so at least a year prior to to con to conceive you know a year prior folic acid is very important vitamin c is very important um vitamin d is very important calcium zinc all those things if you can if you can get all these cocktail medicines all these pregnant care well woman and something like that. if you can get them then please get them but if you're getting well woman or pregnant care surely while pregnant if you're getting pregnant care you still have to get folic acid because it doesn't have enough i think it has just 400 milligrams but for most of us who are not really eating healthy to start with you need um no 400 micrograms right your iron tablets and it's just eat just eat healthy okay that's that's it whatever you eat is going to your child so just eat healthy as much as you can the one way your body fit tolerates collect that now another tip for preparing for delivery right no matter the type whether it's vagina or cs another tip for preparing for delivery is to make sure you have everything you need okay make sure you have everything you need if you're using a, a public hospital where you know you have to bring everything on the list please buy everything on that list if you can try and buy everything on that list you don't want to be worried about oh my baby doesn't have clothes i don't have pads i don't have this while you are in labor while you're trying to give birth okay pack your hospital bag as early as possible 28 weeks 32 weeks 30 weeks i have a video on what's in my hospital bag um make sure your house is clean before you go and give birth if you need help make sure you get help before you go and give birth make sure your house is clean make sure your food is your fridge is stocked up you have enough food okay either you cook it or someone cooks it or you order it whatever it is make sure you have enough food because you don't want when you give birth that those first few days where your your brain is scattered to so not be thinking about who will like it for me um, my fridge and my freezers are all connected to my inverter so they are always on like always on someone ask me that question in one of my videos about how i preserve food my fridge and freezer are always on they never go off except i put it off to defrost it and clean it right so if you can if you can afford it get an inverter and hook your freezer up to it but if you cannot afford it then or if you want to buy it you can buy a small gen that will be specific for your freezer like that gen nobody should touch it in your house like once it's, it should be just on there for your freezer so that you can have enough food and you can you know store breast milk if you want to pump and all of that 
you know, you need your freezer to always be on to store breast milk well. All those defrosting, frosting, defrosting, frosting can actually spoil your breast milk and you'll be giving your child poison, you will not know. So you need a freezer that is on on a specific steady temperature for, your, for you to be able to preserve breast milk. When you are going to the hospital, get snacks, get, you know, a book that you can read. If you're a kind of person that likes to read or you have internet, I carried my internet too. I said I must watch YouTube. I must watch YouTube, even though I was even creating content at that time. I mean, for, 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 for Sophia, but for all my kids, I always went with my phone, with my internet, you know, with snacks. I always had snacks because me, I'm, I'm very peckish. So I always had snacks. Um, yeah, just have all your things complete. I think it helps to have all your things complete. You're not looking for who to borrow from or who to beg from or who, emergency, emergency, go and get this, go and, no. Try and ha have more than enough, Seth. Because me, I usually go with more than enough and I go back home with everything. And that should be on my own. I go see you, Zamna, I know go spoil. So have more than enough, go to the hospital with kids, have someone to help you. Always have somebody by your side if you can. If you can't, I mean, you can't kill yourself now, you will do it yourself. But if you can get help, maybe your sister, your family member, your friend, whoever can help you, let somebody be there to you know keep your company to help you in my own case it's usually my husband you know that was there to help me basically for all of them but you need like a delivery partner basically if you have other kids um like you have older kids and all of that make sure that they're taken care of make sure there's somebody taking someone you trust taking care of them okay if you need to ship them to grandma's house or ship them somewhere that you know they can be with somebody that can take care of them very well then please do it okay because if you're trying to give birth or if you're just giving birth and you're worried about your other children, it can weigh on you, it can affect you psychologically, it can affect the whole experience for you. So make sure your kids are in good hands, they have enough food, enough snacks, you know, enough, you've, you've kept enough instructions for them, how they eat, how they go to school, things like that, okay? Then, I don't know if I missed anything, but very, very important is prayer okay you need to pray you need to confess positively you need to build up your faith okay you need to read your bible study your bible read about you know people who gave birth and gave birth well read about whoever you want to read about whatever read, read good stories okay consume good stories of people who gave birth and, and stuff like that but just try and build up your faith because Delivery is not a child's play. -o. Delivery is a life and death situation, okay? I'll be life or death situation. Delivery, there's a thin line, oh. You see that? <laughs> I don't want to scare you guys, but there's a thin line between life and death when it comes to delivery. You can be shining teeth one time and the next minute you are fighting for your life, okay? So that is why you really need, and it's only that going to be said that place, only you. Now your faith go matter. Yes, it's good to have a praying partner, it's good to have a faithful partner or a partner that has faith, but your faith is what is most important at that time. So, spend your pregnancy trying to build up your faith, spend your pregnancy trying to build up your, you know, resilience and your confession and your words, you know, the kind of words you say to yourself and say to others, use your pregnancy time to actually build this up and sleep as much as possible. I see when I see pregnant women, that are just jumping up and down. They don't want to sleep. They're walking up and down. They're going to different places. I'm like, hey, hey, my dear sister. Actually, first time moms. I'm like, hey, you're going to have a rude shock. Rude awakening is what's, what's waiting for you in the front, Abby. You don't want to just go and relax and sleep. You're there doing a, ah, I'm too strong. I'm too strong. Ah, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> okay, so please try and sleep as much as possible. Try and rest as much as possible. Especially when you don't have other kids taken care of. You can sleep, Abby. Try and sleep as much as possible. Because once that baby comes, your sleep pattern is going to be forced to change immediately. And you will be so shocked. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I'm so exhausted, you guys. I've been filming since time to go and pick up my kids from school. But yeah, let me know if you have any more questions or if you learned anything from this video or if you have something to add, you have good advice to add. Good advice, so because if I see nonsense advice, I'm going to delete it. If you have good advice to add, you know, for moms and all of that, then please leave it in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.